welcome to this presentation of the Rotary Club of North Bethesda, Maryland, USA. Our club was established in 1974. We meet every Friday morning at 7.45 a.m. and we often invite guest speakers to give presentations on all kinds of interesting subjects. Please contact us through our website at nbrotary.org. And thanks for watching. I'm here from the Levine School of Music to talk to us about the program. And as you know, they are candidates for this year, so let's hand it over. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for inviting us to <laughs> such a such a great breakfast. Um, how do I get the slides? <laughs> Great, thanks. Well, again, good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, my name is Bobby Consolatore. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Communications from Being Music. Joined uh, today by Lisa Benemies, our Vice President for Development and Strategic Project. Strategic, right? Um, so we're really excited. I mean, we've met, I think I've met most of you in the room already. Uh, sorry, I can't meet uh, everyone online in person today, but great to sort of virtually meet you. Um, and we're really excited to make more friends here in North Texas. But in the meantime, I'd like to give a brief overview of everything uh, about Levine Music, as we are the D.C. region's preeminent center for music education. Let me make sure I can do this. The other one. The other one. Aha! <laughs> so the Levine story starts... When our three founders were up here on the on the slide, uh, Diana Engel, Ruth Kogan, and Jacqueline Marlin realized what the DC area lacked. A center for high quality music education. <laughs> right from the beginning, they aspired to build a musical home for both top-notch performers and absolute beginners. A school with opportunities for the youngest learners in early childhood, all the way through advanced music theory and individual lessons and recitals, and an educational community for those who could pay as well as those who couldn't. So in 1976, the tri this trio got to work. For their name, they chose to memorialize their friend Selma Levine, a prominent Washington attorney and amateur pianist who was tragically lost in a car crash the previous year. Inspired by Selma's memory and passion for encouraging aspiring musicians, they set up shop in a basement of a small church. In our first year, Levine grew to include 16 faculty members, including teachers from local universities and members of the National Symphony Orchestra. And they taught nearly 70 students. Thanks to an early and crucial contribution by the Eugene and Agnes e. Meyer Foundation, we were able to offer a number of those early students full or partial scholarships in that first year. <laughs> So it turns out our family's wrong with something. In those early years, the phones kept ringing, students kept signing up. Within three years, Levine outgrew that small church basement. And within four, our founders who were running Levine as volunteers, basically, were able to bring on our first full-time director, who was Joanne. By 1992, Levine was ready to purchase our first permanent home at 2801 Upton Street in Northwest DC, which was formerly the Geophysical Laboratory at the, of the Carnegie Institution. And it's still known today as our Northwest campus. It's sort of our headquarters, at least, and I have our office. Um, in the following years, we opened more campuses in Southeast DC, uh, Northern Virginia, and Maryland. In 2005, our Maryland campus moved to the Music Center at Strathmore, where we still are today. Uh, we became the primary music education provider for the Arts Center and found new friends and partners in the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra at Strathmore, City Dance, Interplay, Maryland Classic Youth Orchestras, the National Philharmonic, and Washington Performing Arts. In that same year, 2005, our campus in Southeast DC moved to the newly constructed Town Hall Education Arts and Recreation Campus, which we all call the Art. In addition to housing Levine, the ARC is home to branches of Children's Hospital Wellness Clinic, Boys and Girls Club of Greater Washington, Covenant House, the Washington <laughs> Ballet, 
Portman School of Art and Design, Parklands Community Center, Trinity University. <laughs> this, this list is ending now. Uh, and Washington Middle School for Girls, all of which are committed, including Levine, are committed to serving disadvantaged children at risk youth. As part of our commitment to our community in Southeast DC, Levine students at the ARC who live in DC Ward 7 and 8 are eligible for special tuition discounts, which would actually apply automatically uh, when they uh, register online. In 2016, our Maryland presence grew further still as we opened our campus in downtown Silver Spring on the second floor of a new building that also houses the Silver Spring Public Library. Both our Silver Spring campus and Strathmore campus are supported in part by the Arts and Humanities Council of Montgomery County. Today, as we near our 50th anniversary, just a few years, uh, of inspiring the greater Washington community to play and enjoy music together. You'll find the lead music not just on our campuses, but all across the community. Community means many things that would be in, including engaging partnerships with schools and social service organizations for music instructions, uh, excuse me, music instruction may not be available or affordable. Our community partnerships range from sending Levine faculty on special visits to local schools in, let's say, DC Ward 8, to running regular music instruction for partnering schools, which includes Bishop Walker School for Boys and Washington Girls, as well as Apple Tree Institute at Parkland. These programs help us spread the benefits of music education beyond our walls, underscoring one of the key elements of playing music, getting to share it with others. In addition to Levine faculty teaching across the community, Levine students enjoy performing across the community as well. Recently, actually, we saw the Levine, the Levine Jazz Ensemble make the news uh, performing and wowing the crowd at DC Jazz Fest. And our students participating in the Washington Musical Pathways Initiative, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, made their Kennedy Center debut just this past November on the Millennium Stage. For our students, these performance opportunities are not just good practice. I mean, they are good practice. <laughs> but they're a chance for them to share their love of music with new people, inspiring them not just to watch the show, but to pick up an instrument themselves and make their own music. An investment in music education is an investment in sure. Whether our students go on to become medical researchers, lawyers, teachers, engineers, chefs, or professional pianists, we know that learning music will help them learn about themselves and the world around them. It's why we believe so strongly in making music education available to all. At Levine, our tuition assistance program provides tuition discounts to hundreds of students every year that could not otherwise afford music lessons or classes. Plus, our recently launched Young Artist Program offers 100% free weekly private instruction and music therapy courses to DC students that are deeply committed to their music studies. Through our Honors and Rising Star Merit-Based Programs, <clears throat> students receive special scholarships plus access to a peer group of dedicated young musicians and a plethora of enrichment activities to help them grow as students and as young artists. In addition to these phenomenal programs, Ravine is a proud founding member of the Baltimore Washington Musical Pathways program, which we're in partnership with alongside the Kennedy Center, National Symphony Orchestra, DC Youth Orchestra, and Peabody Institute in Baltimore. Funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, this scholarship program supports and empowers middle and high school students who identify as Black, Indigenous, and or people of color on their journeys towards pursuing advanced study in music and transforming professional orchestral landscape. <laughs> Learning to sing and play music in a lesson or class really can help shape the lives of students of any age. But we also use music as a therapeutic tool to reach beyond barriers of social, communicative, and cognitive limitations. <laughs> Through music therapy, Individuals can identify and manage various emotional states, pursue opportunities for creativity and self-expression. We have a team of board-certified music therapists who work with clients on our campuses 
as well as at partner sites across the community, and are trained to assess an individual's physical, cognitive, social, emotional, and communi uh, communication abilities through music. <clears throat> we work with individuals with autism spectrum disorders, developmental and learning disabilities, mental health needs, Alzheimer's disease, and other aging-related uh, concerns, substance abuse, uh, excuse me, substance abuse problems, and other medical issues. But for the general population, music therapy can promote wellness, help with stress and pain management, and improve relaxation. For example, a child with autism spectrum disorder may engage in music therapy sessions to help find their inner voice and connect with the world around them, while an adult with anxiety may be working to manage stress and increase coping mechanisms through musical interactions. In the community, we can work with adults with memory disorders to encourage socialization <clears throat> and reality orientation, while also supporting their caregivers with stress, relief, and phone care. Every session or group is unique, of course, just like every individual has unique strengths, needs, and responses. Most of our more than 3,000 students uh, enjoy their music lesson, their classes in the afternoons and early evenings after school or on the weekends during the academic year, particularly Saturday. But when school's out for the summer, our studios and halls and lawns stay filled with the sights and sounds of inspiration. Many students continue their private instruction during the summer, but our flagship summer offering is a beloved three-week music and art build day camp called Camp Levine, which we actually offer in two sessions. So really, but they, you can choose the first session, the last session, and then you choose both. At so many of our campuses, July means it's time for camp. From morning stays, final performances, campers spend their whole days learning new musical skills, gaining confidence, and creating lasting friendships. At Camp Levine, we believe in nurturing what we call the total musical child. That's developing skills for creative expression through singing, dancing, playing instruments, musical theater, visual art, and a whole bunch of fun games and activities. But you don't have to take it from me. This Camp Levine is really, really a fan favorite. Uh, I think this year is our fourth year in a row of being voted the number one summer camp uh, by the Washington City Papers. Best of DC awards. And if you have uh, been on one of our campuses during the summer, I think you'll see we're a shoe in for five years in a row. <laughs> Ever since our founders came together to create what would become the Washington Community's leading music education center, Levine has always been for all backgrounds, all skill levels, all musical interests, genres, and all ages. On a, any given day, one of our campuses, you might see a young parent with their four-month-old child on their way to discover new sounds together in a first music class, which is our early childhood offerings. At the same time, a retired adult might be walking to their piano lesson, finally picking up their childhood passion that they didn't have as much time for during their career. In that same building, you'll see every age in between heading to their class or performance, excited to show their friends what they can play and eager to learn something new. Some may think that music lessons are just for kids, but in fact, around a third of our student body are adults. Whether they're playing their first notes in a lesson or returning for an encore and joining one of our adult ensembles like Capital City Voices Jazz Choir, Levine's strong adult student community will tell you that music has the power to create lasting friendships at any age and that it's never too late to find something new. So that brings uh, me or us to the end of my overview of all things Levine. I'd love to take any questions you might have, and I'm sure at least it would as well. There's already one, yeah. Again, um, you haven't mentioned funding. Uh, your therapists, your faculty, your teachers. Um, I know any institution, academic institution, even full tuition doesn't cover the cost. So. You've got to have other sources. So can you talk about your total um, funding? Certainly. Um, uh, thank you for that segue. So um, I oversee our, our fundraising program. And um, we, you're correct that, that um, 
tuition, um, earned income, if you will, covers about 70% of our costs. But as Bobby mentioned, we all, our campus in Southeast, for example, is discounted to begin with. Um, and that really serves our mission to provide this resource to anyone who seeks it. So we receive funding from all um, sources. Uh, as Bobby mentioned, Montgomery County provides some government support. We also receive individual support, foundation support. We are a, a, a lean, mean fundraising machine, and we are always looking to provide as much as we can to our community. So that kind of gives you an overview of our fundraising um, experience of revenue. Yes. Are you a business or a charity? We are a nonprofit. We are a registered nonprofit. And when did that happen? Uh, from our inception. From the very beginning. We, thank you for asking that question because I do that sometimes say people think it's not on any of the literature. We are not, um, we are not like uh, some of our peers in the field who are private companies. We are, uh, we are, our goal is to give away whatever we can bring in and, and stay solvent. <laughs> yes. I have a question. If you allow me, I have a two questions. First question is Are you planning to open new? New schools, I mean, a special area in the north, Frederick Urbana has grown up huge, you know, now. So yeah. many children yeah. over there. there. Yeah. Do you yeah, so, you know, I think we are always looking at how to better serve or how to best serve the whole Washington community. And I think as we see in areas like North Virginia, areas that you describe, mm -hmm. communities are sort of in flux and in transition. So of course we keep an open mind about that. But right now we have, as you heard, six campuses, lots of students, tons of activity happening. And we also reach uh, sort of a, I wouldn't say result of the pandemic, but as the pandemic, you know, uh, forced us to immediately switch to virtual instruction at the beginning. Uh, we now do maintain some virtual lessons and classes like our music theory offering is actually are almost exclusively online. And so those offerings are available to students nationwide and internationally. So yeah, that's a good answer. Thank you. And my question, my second question, you know, music is very big in the human society. It's unbelievably huge, you know, music. And I know I just want to show, I know something. Uh, it is uh, some uh, scientists, they found connection for healing, healing people with Baroque music, like a Mozart, you know, and uh, it's healed um, a lot of, you know, included Parkinson and uh, some, you know, another mental health. And I know Germany has a lot of achievement in this point. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what. First of all, it's very nice what you're doing for people, for your children. And second, if you have some advanced searching for that, you know, how to operate. It's a huge tool, you know, music. I was just going to add, so last week I was fortunate to be able to visit one of our partnerships in Gaithersburg, actually, with uh, an adult um, a, an adult group, um, special needs adults, with their caregivers um, engaged in a group music therapy session. And one of the, um, and, and I'm just mentioning this, but uh, I was speaking with one of the parents, and um she said to me, and I was I was quite moved, um, and I'll try not to be now, but she mentioned that her adult daughters can uh, participate verbally in music and is then able to then transfer that for a period of time post her group session mm -hmm. and with her with her family. So they she said we never miss a session. So you're right. I mean it, 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 there's phenomenal research in this area. We are fortunate to be able to be witness to it. Thank you. Very, very That's connected to what Linda said about it's a lot of meaning, suicide, and something. It's healed. Yeah. Music, it's yeah. medicine. What, what's the tuition like for somebody this morning? They say they have a five year old or a 10 year old child and want to play the piano or want to learn some music. Well, what, what's your 
So it depends on what um, we know the we course uh, is specifically. So we operate, most, most of our instruction is either on the private lesson track or the group class track. Private lessons can be sign up for your full academic year, which could be just, I think it's just over $1,000 for a weekly 30 minute instruction. But, right, because you can do a 30 minute, you can do a 45 minute, right. you can do an hour, you can do a class with a master teacher, and that, yeah. that will get you to a, a very expensive level. But yeah. so many of our students, like my son, <laughs> who I love dearly, but is never going to be a master musician. <laughs> can take his 30 minute piano lesson love it love his teacher but um that's more what i, I think that that's what sort of sets them being apart is that you have my son and you have other people who are really um exceptionally you know committed to them. but that answered your right, thousand dollars more or less for full right. tuition if you signed up for the full like academic yeah course. and you could like, like a weekly class it would be a weekly one-on-one -on -one lesson as a weekly one on one, yeah. they come yeah. to the house or yeah. that's on. Yeah, they come to the house or one on. So they would be at our locations or on or at your own. Yeah, or at a partnership site. Uh, although those are mostly group classes or music therapy offerings. But what's the youngest that you take? So private lessons begins. It's, it differs per instrument. Say like brass instruments start a little bit later. Has uh, a lot to do with teeth coming in, right? <laughs> And uh, and uh, the piano can start um, maybe around five or six. And yeah. but we have some stooky, some in um, strings can start yeah. closer to three or four. It really has to be with and and um, with the physical capability at the time, developmentally. Yeah. Um, the piano, you can imagine a small hand versus a little one that's a little bit that can do five notes in a row. So our, our placement process, so if you were to sign up for a uh, music class at Sedlogene, you would go through, um, you submit a new student placement form, right? And uh, you would indicate what instrument you're inter interested in, and then one of our department chairs, expert in, let's say, the piano, will meet with you personally, and uh, it will meet with the students, that was your, your child, it would be with you and your child, and sort of assess, okay, is this five year old kind of ready for piano lessons has been through the attention span as well, and they would make a recommendation on, okay, 30 minutes really at that, or 40 minutes, less, right? And, um, but I would say that uh, group classes is a, is our other, kind of the other side of the spectrum here. Um, group classes can start as young as four months old, uh, which would be our first music offering. So that would be lesson, or excuse me, would be classes for, um, I mean, you know, these are eight, right? So a real young student and a caregiver at the same time who participate in the class with some other uh, families. And then those kind of, um, as those get older, the caregivers are a little less involved in the actual class, right? Um, and then that can give way to like group piano instruction, let's say, where, you know, some young students are all learning the basics, fundamental piano uh, at a, in a piano lab together, several, Keyboards together, uh, and those are at a low quality. Uh, this is a, a broader question, but well, one is: Are you involved? But are there instruments that are falling out of fashion? And you know, you know how many people want an oboe? Or you know, which instruments are going to go extinct because people are no longer playing? You know, I don't know if I would say that any that i've noticed any instruments fall out of fashion per se but i do think or we know that there is varying demand for instruments and it kind of lays where you would probably think it lays like piano is the most popular um violin guitar drums they're right up there as well and you mentioned oboe there's less demand for it. you know the beautiful uh, inscription <laughs> student we do have a bassoon student, so you know the bassoon is that was the first instrument that came to mind for me. But, yeah, you know we're all so excited when someone wants to learn the bassoon. <laughs> you know, I guess to think of your field and what you work in, what you get really excited about. When someone comes in and wants to learn the bassoon, we say yes, keep the, keep that alive. And so it's a college education bassoon. Uncle who played it or something like that. There's usually a family connection uh, to those ones that. People want to um, continue, or the accordion. 
say, or the Van de Leon, which I just learned about, which is, is a, uh, also similar to the accordion. So we do have these students, but they are fewer and much grouped. Right? Well, what we find, I think, just uh, in the industry is that um, most students will start on one of the more like what we call popular right. instruments. Uh, like a, a, I think it's probably rare for the student students, let's say, or the oboe student to be learning music from scratch on the oboe. Right? They probably took piano lessons before, or or something else, and then wanted to pick up the oboe. Uh, and do you sell instruments? We do not. Um, we do not sell them. Them. We don't sell them. What we do is we put, we have. Um, an inventory of instruments that we make available to our students with financial need. Uh, so we ask them to rent it. So for and the reason why we do that is it's a very small fee, but we find, as you can likely imagine, that when people put a little money towards something, they take it more seriously. So after a period of time, that fee is forgiven if they continue with the instrument and it becomes their own. And that's um, sort of uh, aligned with our mission of making music available. Um, we unfortunately we can't accept all. I, I say this because um, we can't accept all instrument donations for many reasons. But chief among them is that if we accept an instrument, we make a commitment to the instrument as well as the student, which means pairs. That means tuning. If we place a piano in someone's home, and we do have there is an end to our resources. So um, I tend to be the bearer of bad news when someone says, you know, I have a violin that my son studied on 50 years ago, and I just say, does it have strings? <laughs> you know? So um, we do say no sometimes. And uh, let me just ask, how many students pay nothing, and how many gets, what proportion or number gets some, uh, you know, relief from, get some subsidy? We have approximately 500 of our three, so we could do someone else with a math degree can do that. But um, so somewhere between 500 and 600 of our community receive some form of financial assistance. Of the 3,000? Yes. Do, do you, uh, I'm gonna, definitely you organize some concert, performance, rehearsal, not virtual, you know, personal. And, uh, we would like to know when it we have on a Sunday. Well, the answer is yes, we do. So we probably can. We can. We can. Yeah, have we we have a, a number of performance series actually. Uh, one the one of the installments that's happening this Sunday at our Northwest location is our alumni series. So we actually have you know students who've gone uh, on to have professional music careers come back and perform concerts. Those concerts are actually free. Um, so there's one happening this Sunday at four p.m. Uh, but there are student performances happening almost every week across our campus. It was all listed on our website, website calendar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the question was because we have a website too, mm -hmm. good, you know, attendance. We can put advertisement about this concert on our website. That's always welcome news. People like this. I, I just want to note that the concert happening this Sunday, the reason reason why it's free is thanks to the generosity of a family who's been with Levine since it's actually its founding. And they they wanted to have alums come back so that current students could see them and say, this is this actually and be inspired by them, talk to them and build those bridges. Um, even for those who don't want to pursue it professionally, it just is, it, it kind of ma it makes it, it puts it within context of a life. And when you're a child, you don't have much context of what a life is yet. So that's part of what the goal of this program is. So it's a named series. I went up to, how many teachers are involved in any given year? We have just under, uh, just under 200 faculty. In that includes a lot of part-time, needless to say, of course. So you can't put a full day of teaching together necessarily. No, yeah, but it, and they're all professional musicians in their own right. Are they volunteers? They're, they're, okay. they're, okay. they're all paid. Boys. Wow. Well, thank you. <laughs> the students can talk, and I think the music can certainly change a lot of people's lives, and maybe even do some healing. 
I mean, I can see even that the music can segue with makes the, every day better. With the, with <laughs> the, with the <laughs> I mean, I would think the music could heal some of the people who are depressed as well. Anyway, thank you for your talk, and thank you, uh, thank you for having me.